Hello again, everyone. This is Chris Shera, and that's Robert Harding. And one week, I might actually let him say his own name. <laughs> and this is the Citizens Pick 6 NFL Weekly Video for September 12, 2014. And if you can't tell by the way we're dressed, no, it's not Halloween. It's Dolphins Bills Week. It's a fun week for us here at the Citizen because Robert and I are, you know, we're, it's a spirited competition between our favorite teams. There is a hot Tim Hortons beverage on the line. Any Dolphin players watch this video, don't let me down, guys. I want free coffee. Okay, <laughs> really, please. I need a free coffee. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about that game in, in a couple minutes, but we're going to first discuss the latest with the Ray Rice situation and everything going on. And, and first, I mean, the guy deserved to be caught. I mean, that video in the elevator was, was horrible, terrible. I mean, there's no reason, f you know, plausible reason for what he did. It was wrong. Uh, but now we have other issues now that the NFL and, and, and Commissioner Roger Goodell are in some hot water here, whether they, you know, they actually did see the video of the inside the elevator before deciding on the two-game ban. There's a lot of stuff going on here, kind of, uh, I guess, like a Watergate-type situation here. And, yeah. you know, I mean, does the commissioner survive? Unless there's a smoking gun that says, yeah, he watched it and, and he lied about it. Unless he actually they find proof that he's lying, I think he survives this. I think he'll. I think he'll penalize himself. I think he'll do something. Maybe he'll donate some money to a uh, uh, a better women's shelter. Or maybe he'll volunteer or something. He'll do something to, to rectify this. But if they find out that he's lying, uh, I think he's a goner and, and rightfully so. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because there's there's a lot of parts to this this whole Ray Rice thing, and uh, not just Ray Rice, but how the NFL has handled domestic violence. Uh, uh, cases over the years. Uh, obviously, they don't have the legal side of it. They just, you know, decide whether to punish the player for that offense or not, um, uh, because it's you know conduct detrimental to the league or whatever. But uh, you know, I, I think that uh, this investigation and uh, former FBI directors involved, and you know, it's being uh, it looks like it's being chaired by two uh, NFL owners. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, we'll yeah, Rooney Mara. Rooney Mara, yeah. Not the actress, though. That, that's true. No. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what comes of it. I mean, if they if they figure out that this thing was absolutely absolutely bungled and you know it wasn't handled well at all, you know, I think that that question is going to come up as to whether you know Goodell has to go or not because you know you can't have big uh, big cases like this, big events happen, and you can't have your commissioner uh, messing things up or you know at least being the figurehead of the people that messed up those things up. So, um, you know, I think that's going to be interesting. And, and going forward, seeing how the NFL addresses uh, these uh, these incidents. You know, you got to you gotta have better policies in place. You can't give uh, Ray Rice, you know, two games. You can't, you know, let some of these guys slide right. like they have for many years. Uh, not just Roger Goodell, by the way. You know, in his defense, this has been going on for a long time. Uh, and not just in football, either. And, uh, you know, leagues have to come down yep. hard on these guys. You can't just, this is, as you know, this is, uh, you know, I would say worse than any sort of drug problem, you know, whether it's bounty marijuana gate. or whatever. I think it's worse than Bounty mm -hmm. Gate. You know, Spy all this gate. other stuff, Spy Gate. Yep. You know, those are things that, uh, you know, uh, much different. I mean, you're talking about here uh, guys who really hurt your reputation as a league. Mm -hmm. And you got to do something about it, and hopefully this is a this is a, a turning point for the NFL in regard to these issues. Yeah, and, and I was just going to say, and I think other professional sports leagues and colleges, I think are going to have stricter penalties for these types of incidents, and justifiably so. And and I think that if any good comes out of this, that we see less domestic violence in, in this country. And Robert and I both know in this county, Cuga County, where we live, sadly there's been. You know, domestic violence deaths were um, a jilted ex-boyfriend has killed uh, the you know the, the girlfriend, um, and, and some of these incidents are absolutely horrible. And you just hope that maybe some good comes out of all this. That you know, the spotlight being on domestic violence, that uh, men realize that it's wrong. That you should not um, you know uh, hit your girlfriend, your wife, your partner. You shouldn't do that. It's wrong. So. Uh, I guess we'll wrap it up on that part. Yeah. Anything yeah. Else? Okay. We'll, we'll get to the games, and we're gonna let's just jump right into that Miami Buffalo game. We're we're excited for this. I I mean I'm just really really pumped up for Sunday, but I'm a realist though. I mean look, I was 
I did pick Miami to win last week against New England, okay? You did? I called it. It was a confident pick. It was very confident. A confident pick with a block post. I have, I uh, right, and I have, I'm confident in my team. And could Miami win this weekend? Absolutely. Absolutely could win. And I wouldn't be surprised if they did win. That being said, when I do these picks, I go with my head and not my heart, okay? And going with my head, I know that Buffalo beat Miami twice last year with that pass rush. Okay, they shut down the, they really shut down the run, and they put a lot of pressure on Taney Hill, and it was a disaster. Okay, Mario Williams definitely made his presence felt in that first game. Uh, Miami's offensive line is much improved. Their running game is much improved. They had, um, you know, 194 yards against the Patriots last week. So, you know, Miami on paper is a better team than Buffalo, I believe. Uh, but I think the home field advantage, and Robert knows more about this than I do, those Bills fans, they actually sold this game out, you know, which is good. Ooh, and I shouldn't, be throwing, I shouldn't be throwing stones in the glass house being yeah. Dol you know, a Dolphins fan. But the, I, I mean, with Jim Kelly. You won't see any and, orange seats at Sunday's game. Yeah, right? yeah, that's right, because they're blue or red or something like that. But anyways, with, with everything going on between Jim Kelly's health being good, which is really good to hear, and the new owner, Mr. Pegula there, or is it, Peg, is it Pegula. Pegula? Pegula, I'm sorry, Pegula, I should know that. Uh, I mean, that, that, that crowd is going to be pretty stoked, and I think that's going to play a factor in this game. I think it's going to be a close game. I, I could see Buffalo winning this game like a 24 to 21, uh, low to mid-20s, but as much as I hate to do it, I am going to pick the Bills. I just oh. think that the home field advantage is going to be too much for Miami. But the way I look at it is, if you tell any Dolphins fan you're going to play the Patriots and the Bills, you go one and one, you take that. You know, so I, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see Miami win. I want them to win, but I just think Buffalo's home field is going to be too much, and, I, and Buffalo is going to win this one 24-21. Wow. Solid prediction. Mm -hmm. I hope that happens. I hope, yeah, I know you hope that happens. <laughs> and so who are you picking, sir? Well, you know, Chris, I'm a realist, too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm going to be rooting for the Bills on Sunday. No, no. But I think, uh, I think the Dolphins are going to pull it out. You're putting the hex on them. You're doing this for the hex on You did this last year, and you picked Miami. Because there's no hex. It's, it's Come a on. jinx, man. Come okay, on. so tell me why you're picking Miami. I'm picking Miami for, for a couple of reasons. One... Uh, you know, the Bills obviously swept the Dolphins last year. I don't think that's going to happen again. Uh, I think they're going to, you know, I think they're going to split the season series. And, I, and they're going to win in each other's uh, really? in pl places, I think. You know, I think, uh, I think they'll, you know, the Bills will win later in Miami. But, you know, it, it's one of those weird series. It's a division, yeah. division rivalry. So, um, you know, that's one reason. Uh, the other reason, I really like what I see out of Noshawn Moreno and Lamar Miller. I think that two-headed beast mm -hmm. that the Dolphins have in the backfield, uh, not just this Bills game, but throughout the season, uh, will be uh, big for them. And I think it will be big in this game, too. Um, you know, Tannehill is, you know, well, you know better than I. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll duck that because I'm, I'm not one to talk. Um, but, uh, you know, with with Moreno and Miller, you you know, you really have two dynamic backs there that can help you. And, uh, you know, the Bills had some trouble last week with Matt Forte. So if they can get Moreno and Miller going, this could be a, a good game for Miami. Uh, I'm going to take the Dolphins 23-20 oh, over the Bills. Oh, man. Well, I will say that I think one thing that works in your advantage, and I didn't mention this earlier, is you got Spiller and Jackson. Jackson had a great game. Miami's banged up at linebacker, okay? Uh, Koa Misi's out. Ellerby's on injured reserve. Uh, Wheeler's coming back. But they, they basically had a, a five-man front with a two-linebacker set against the Patriots. It worked pretty well. Uh, obviously, the Bills have time to look at this on film and prepare for it. The Bills have a much better running game than the Patriots. And I think, yeah, you're right, E.J. Manuel, none of our quarterbacks are going to be in the Pro Bowl this year. I think it's easy to say that. The quarterbacks that. won't be the X-Factor. No, they won't game. be the X-Factor. If any, <laughs> if any of our quarterbacks has a great game, I think that team oh, yeah. will win easily, Absolutely. I think, to be honest with you. But I think that Buffalo's running game is just as good as Miami's. But Miami's banged up at linebacker, and I think that's also going to play a role in this game. I think Buffalo's going to run the ball over Miami, and we'll see what happens. I mean, like I said, it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be competitive. could come down to the final play. If it does, I hope Miami gets it. But, you know, like I said, I maybe, maybe I'm doing the old reverse psychology thing here. Who knows? But, all righty, done with that one, folks. Our next game is Atlanta at Cincinnati, okay? And Cincinnati played a great game last week, uh, beating Baltimore. Uh, Atlanta played a great game at home, beating New Orleans. That was really a surprise. Uh, I like Cincinnati in this game. I just think that this team, 
you know, for years and years and years, they've always disappointed. And, you know, they had a good year last year. They made the playoffs. They, you know, I think this year they're on a roll. I, I, I really think this team, if things break right for them, they could, they could have one of those 12 and 4, 13 and 3 seasons. That's how much I like the Bengals. So I like them over Atlanta in this game. I'm taking the Bengals too. I, lo- I liked what I uh, saw last week, uh, you know, against the Ravens. I believe they beat the Ravens on the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's. That's a pretty, uh, pretty good thing to do. Obviously, the Steelers couldn't do that last night. So, uh, yeah, I'll take the Bengals. All right. Our next game is uh, Arizona at the Giants. And I'll tell you, this is a tough one. I really wavered on this oh, one. Oh. It was tough. Wow. I, pick, I picked the Giants. I, I, I know I'm crazy for doing it. Eli Manning looked horrible against Detroit. But, and it's a short week, too, for the Giants. But they're playing their home opener. I want to, play, I want to think they're going to play better. Arizona, you know, they played Monday night, short week, and they got to travel cross country. So I think that's going to play a little bit of a role in this for the for the Cardinals. I think they're going to be running out of gas at the end of the game. I like the Giants in a close one. Cardinals by ten. Mm, I'll write tell it, you, write it down. I'm, I was tempted to switch my pick. I really was going back and forth, but I said, no, I pick the Giants first. I'm going to stick with them, whether I'm wrong or not. I'm going to stick with them. Our next game: Seahawks at the Chargers. Could be a Super Bowl preview. Could be. The Chargers are not bad. Come on. The Chargers are not Come bad. On. That being said, I'm picking, I'm picking the Seahawks. I, I mean, I don't know how you can pick against the Seahawks really any game this year. I mean, when they're on the road, obviously, there's a chance. But I just think they have too many weapons. Uh, again, San Diego played Monday night, short week. They are at home. But I really think that in the NFL now, that when you have short weeks, it plays a role. Um, I just think Seattle's got too much. Defense is too good. I like the Seahawks. Yeah, Seahawks have had a... Uh... Kind of a long, long break here, you know, because mm-hmm. they played, of course, the Thursday night opener, and so uh, you know, playing the Chargers on a short week it certainly is a disadvantage for the Chargers. Um, yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking Seattle in this one. Uh, you know, San Diego did show a lot against uh, the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. You know, they really should have won that game. Yeah. But uh, you know, I think the Seahawks are just too good and. Uh, yeah, I see them beating the San Diego Chargers on Sunday. All right, our next game, uh, a battle of the green teams. That's the Jets at the Packers. And uh, I don't know how you can pick against the Packers at home. There's no way the Packers go to 0-2. They're, it's home opener at Lambeau. The Jets are a better team than last year. Uh, looks like Geno Smith played better this p- previous game, but they beat the Raiders. Come on. I think the Packers will win in a route. I think it'll be like a 30-10 to game, to be honest with you. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a big win for Green Bay. Our final game, and, and this is a great, great football game, Eagles at the Colts, okay? Now, the Eagles had to come back to beat the Jaguars. Uh, the Colts lost in Denver. No, no shame in that, obviously. I like the Colts. Uh, I just think that, like I said, these teams are too good to be going 0-2. It's their home opener. Um, I, just, I just like Indianapolis in this game. I just think that they're going to get their passing game going again. And a little easier competition, not by much, but uh, I think they should beat the Eagles and, uh, and, and salvage and go one and one. I, I really like, uh, like this matchup. I, you know, I think these two teams are, are fairly close to each other. I mean, the Eagles do play in a, you know, they play in a weak division. The yep. Colts are in a weak division, but they're two great teams. Yep. Uh, I'm picking the Colts, too. Uh, really, they showed a lot last week. I mean, they, they were getting creamed in Denver. Yeah. And then they made that charge in the fourth quarter, obviously came up short, but really showed you something that this team is, you know, resilient. They're not gonna they're not gonna uh, go down without a fight. So uh, I'm taking the Colts in this one. I think it'll be a good game though. I think it'll be one of the mm-hmm. best games of the week. Yeah, I think so too. For the standings I am four and two through week one. He is three and three. Robert's three and three. So a uh, chance to maybe take the lead if things break right. And I'll tell you if the Dolphins win Hey, I'll, I'll be thrilled because, yeah, I lose a game, but I pick up a cup of coffee, so that's not too shabby. <laughs> so, uh, and you might notice I'm wearing number 82, Brian Harline. It's my favorite Dolphin player. Hope he has a great game against the Bills. And uh, uh, we appreciate you folks watching, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Go Dolphins.